I've talked about it so much on the podcast, the idea that those ghost shows, they, they call them dramatizations when something uh, happens on yes. camera. Right. They make it seem real. They make it seem like it's yeah. happening in the moment, but it is, they're faking it based on oh, yeah. a real yeah. experience from before, yeah, right? I, I believe that, absolutely. But I'll tell you, there's there's only been one time that, as I say, I don't get creeped out, but there was one time that um i backed away and again it was at the custom house and and as i say i don't want to make this whole podcast about the custom house no ian everybody but, should know that you've investigated other places other than the custom house i just want to make yeah. that clear <laughs> but it was it was at the custom house and we trudy and myself went upstairs to the attic to to walter's area and we were the only two up there at the time pitch black no lights on so what happens is in those conditions you lose your senses of, of sight and you've got to rely on your sense of maybe smell hearing right um maybe you know are, are you going to get goosebumps on your arms that sort of thing so, and we went in there and walter the caretaker of the custom house must have been on. I don't know. By him. <laughs> he must have been, you know, fanatical at that point because we walked into that attic and we felt this overwhelming negative energy in that attic. And Trudy and I were going up there because we know that um, there's that little child's tricycle up there, um, which we know little David was associated with. So that was our first um, goal was to go up there. And we went up and we just got hit with this negative feeling in the air. Walter was just in a mood. And Trudy and I both looked at each other and we went, no. No, we need to leave right now. We both had a feeling that we were actually in danger if we had stayed. Yeah. So we left the attic, went downstairs, um, and spent the that entire evening investigating the vault and the and the old staircase, the the old servant's original uh, basement staircase. And, yeah, that's, that's the only time I've ever been chased out. And he doesn't really follow. I, I've no, I remember that from the custom house that every floor was like its own community. You had the basement uh, with a community, and the attic was kind of like Walter's domain. Of yes, the dark exactly. lady it, seemed to, oh, I, to be able I to agree. move. I agree, one hundred percent. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah, no, because I know uh, I, I've talked about this too. Is like the idea when a house turns you know you're you're living in a house that has a presence and it's not restless it's not angry it's fine you you just you have these experiences and you just pass them off but when a house turns this is like when you get the abandoned haunted house on a hill it doesn't feel comfortable being in that space so you're lucky that you know you you felt that at the custom house where you could just leave it there and go home and feel relaxed and that it didn't come home with you but uh yeah i mean the 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 feeling is definitely palpable and oh, there's a absolutely. reason to that yeah yeah because they well, affect I, your emotions i've always said i've always said your own body is the most best paranormal tool you can have you don't need to go out and spend thousands of dollars on 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 all this fancy equipment that we all have um your own body is is the very best paranormal tool you can have going into a location. Well, this is getting into the spiritual. I'll tell you, I've worked with psychics for a very long time. And if there's one thing I've learned is that there's really nothing different about them. It just seems like if you can get yourself to a level of focus, uh, and then once you get to that certain level where your, your random thoughts aren't clouding up your mind, that eventually you can start picking up on the energies. You have better instincts in life. It helps you with your job, with your business, et cetera, et cetera. So I always tell people, I said, it doesn't hurt. 
just, you know, try and build your psychic abilities. There's lots of books out there that can help you do that. And you're right. So I assume you and Trudy have delved into becoming a little more psychic over the years. I, I don't consider myself psychic, although we all are. I know we all are. She is, she is sensitive when she goes into a location. She can pick up the things first. And we'll go in somewhere and she'll say, oh, do you feel that? And I go, no. <laughs> it, it, for me, it has to be an overwhelming presence such as going up into the attic with Walter and and feeling a presence of danger for my own physical safety. That's the only time that I really pick it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm similar that way. I've I've gotten better over the years for sure. I've noticed that when I go into certain rooms, I can kind of feel if there's something going on, you know, it it, it affects you. You you process it different everybody processes it differently. Uh, I know we're running out of time here, but I, I did want to ask you, uh, do you have any uh, investigations coming up that you're looking forward to? Have you guys set anything in motion? Well, what um, it's been quiet, but what I've, I've really been enjoying is um, the investigations and ghost hunts from our mutual friend, Lauren. Yes, um, Lauren Holder. I've talked yes. about it. It's uh, we've been at the uh, Niagara on the Lake Courthouse reach recently, which is a beautiful building. Oh, it sure is. Yeah, you guys. Sure uh, I know you were you were there with Trudy the one time, and then you came most recently by yourself. Uh, any any anything to report from inside the building? Yes. It um, well, when Trudy was there, she felt uh, um, there's a there's an old jail cell that still exists in the building um, from when it was the courthouse and she felt being touched in that cell and then um, this last most recent time I got a ITC EVP off of my uh, spirit box of a child saying mama which is relevant because in the previous investigation Lauren had a um, a, um, a spirit board session set up, and there was a child coming through the board, kept spelling it "mama." So that that really kind of impressed me that my EVP was relevant compared to that um, that that the previous uh, spirit board episode. Yeah, it's like there's validation there. But I'll yes, tell you, yes. it, it was a very energetic, uh, even even I had an experience in their relation to the board. I'm going to talk about that next week on the show, just a little uh, teaser there, and I'll post it on the uh, Facebook page for everybody to see. But I always want to ask, like with investigators, when I do interviews and whatnot, I always ask, like, I, I know now how you got into it, but what is the is the reasoning behind? Because everybody tends to have their reason to be in the paranormal do you have like a personal reason for being in it? There's no, there's no, 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 there's no personal reason. As I say, it, I had the, the energy of Walter, the caretaker from the custom house, move through me. And as I say, I have never experienced anything in my life like that before. And that was life altering. So that's like just the excitement that that might Was happen. That again? incident, I just went, whoa, it, it, it changed my life. It, yeah. But do you think um, the idea behind investigation for some is the, how do I put this, the attempt to dive more into the unknown and to know things that we're not meant to about the other side, about what happens after death? For some, yeah, that, that you can ask you can ask ten paranormal investigators why they they work in this field, and you're probably going to get ten different answers. But the most popular answer is what you just said: is that they are looking for what awaits us on the other side. Well, that's not me. I I want to communicate. I want to I want to know the stories, the lost stories of these souls that 
Um, for example, if you go to a cemetery where there's soldiers from the War of 1812 buried, what stories do they have to tell? That That's what I want to know. That's a great way to look at it. I, I remember I posted something on the uh, podcast page recently, and it was about what's the strangest question you uh, would ask at a historic monument, like a house tour. And uh, somebody was like, uh, if the ghost came through and said, uh, you're getting all of this wrong. <laughs> I thought it was, it's kind of funny <laughs> because it would be awesome if we could just confirm like if you're like, I don't know what happened in the past, but then you're just like, let's ask this ghost. <laughs> this ghost has all the information you could ever want. Uh, that would make life so much easier. History class would be so much more interesting in high school. That's for sure. It would. Yep, absolutely. Uh, well, we're almost up, but uh, thank you so much for your time, Ian. Uh, did you want to plug, I guess, your YouTube page or Facebook? Um, ghost Hunt Paranormal. And you have like Simple uh, as that. evidence and, and stories and stuff posted? Um, it's what I post is our investigation videos. Awesome. So definitely go check that out. Thanks again, Ian. I appreciate it. You bet. Thank you. Well, that was a hopefully not so rare episode where I interview someone. I'm planning to do more of these as the months and years go by. But that's the show, everyone. Again, if you enjoy this, you can support me. Facebook, join the Facebook group GD Daniel Podcast. You can also leave us a review. I think it helps with the algorithm. I don't know that stuff, but you leave a review, let us know what you think on Apple, Spotify, Google, however you listen. But thanks, and I'll talk to you next week. <laughs>